This video is part of the Membrane Versus series, and this one compares reverse osmosis with evaporation for seawater desalination. There are two ways of separating salt from highly saline solutions such as seawater. The water can either be evaporated or permeated through a reverse osmosis membrane. For RO, the seawater entering the membrane produces a concentrated brine waste stream and a permeate potable water product stream. This permeate stream requires post-treatment to stabilise the pH by adding alkalinity. Evaporation uses heat to turn the water into steam, which is subsequently condensed to produce a pure water product. Like the RO permeate, this condensate product needs to be stabilised to be usable as potable water. Now, in terms of energy consumption, you could think of the RO permeation as being high and evaporation as being really high. So in practice, RO is always used for desalination unless a low cost thermal energy source is available. For evaporation, the thermal energy needed for the process can be provided as low grade waste steam from a power station. So where seawater evaporation is implemented for large scale drinking water supply, it is most often associated with electrical power generation, along with a low cost primary source of thermal energy such as cheap oil. For both processes, energy consumption is reduced by recovering energy from the brine stream. In the case of evaporation, energy is recovered in the form of heat from the brine through a series of evaporative stages. The potential heat energy or power recovery is then proportional to the difference in temperature between the initial brine temperature and the final temperature at which it's discharged. In the RO process, the latent mechanical energy is recovered from the brine stream using a turbine. This converts the flow of high pressure brine from mechanical into electrical energy. So, RO is the favoured technology for seawater desalination based on energy consumption. Whilst RO energy efficiencies have improved over the years, the lower limit of energy consumption is imposed by the seawater salinity. The pressure required to pass water through the membrane relates to the water osmotic pressure, which is proportional to the salt concentration. This makes it practically challenging to get the specific energy consumption, that's SEC, down below about 3.3 kilowatt hours per meter cubed permeate product for a normal seawater feed, once pressure losses and other factors are taken into account. Adding the SEC for the clarification pretreatment, normally by membrane filtration, gives an overall FEC of about 3.5 kilowatt hours per meter cubed. On the other hand, municipal wastewater is much less saline less than 0.1% normally, which equates to a desalination SEC of around 1.1 kilowatt hours per meter cubed or less. Biological pretreatment by conventional activated sludge followed by membrane filtration or by MBR technology demands relatively little energy, giving a total SEC of below 1.8 kilowatt hours per meter cubed. Desalination by RO is always more energetically efficient than by evaporation, unless there's a source of waste heat. And freshwater production from sewage is more energetically efficient than from seawater. But of course, there are other factors to consider besides just energy when it comes to drinking water supply.